This is one of the only cars I've ever seen where so much had to come apart just to do a charcoal canister. This is crazy. Let's get started. You guys heard that right, a charcoal canister used for evap emissions, evaporative emissions. This is a 2005 Toyota Avalon. It's in here for valve cover gaskets, it's in here for charcoal canister, power steering pump, quite a list of things. It actually was quoted to do the timing cover as well. There was so much oil pouring from the valve covers because we were like, it's possible that we get in here and find out the timing cover needs to be done. So we need to go ahead and quote it just in case and the customer approved it. Luckily we crossed our fingers. We do not have to do the timing cover, which is an engine out job on this 17 hours. Not fun. Let's go ahead and take a look around this Avalon. You see the protrusion there, Mrs. Wizard? It's happy to see you. Uh, whoa, Wizard, this is a family friendly channel, please. Yeah, it's actually the exhaust is down for the charcoal canister. You can see this is quite a bit bigger than a Camry. This is Toyota's answer to a Cadillac DeVille or a Lincoln Town Car or something like that. It's not a Lexus. It is a Toyota, but it's a much bigger Toyota than you're used to seeing. The headlights are very yellowed. The customer wants to get a few things fixed, but they're not interested in doing a full-on restoration. It's just going to be a kid's car, and so we can only do what we can be approved to do. The wheels are a little dirty, but they're actually in good shape. You can see down this side, it's quite a long car. It has lots of room in the interior, as you guys will see when Mrs. Wizard gives you a tour. There's a little bit of fading going on with the paint here. They're actually pretty decent cars. They're comfortable, they're big. If you've got a family of four and you want to carry them in comfort, this is much better than a Camry as far as leg room and head room and all those things. This one's in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood. Look, hood shocks that aren't holding it up, but I'll hold it up with my arm. This is our 3.5 V6. It has timing chains, not timing belts. And we've already done the actual valve cover gaskets and everything on this. We have quelled the leak or stemmed the flow. And once we did that, we could see the timing cover was nice and dry and it stayed nice and dry. We got very, very lucky. Wizard, how did you develop a third arm? Uh, that's your arm holding the, <laughs> holding it up. Good thing there's here, someone here to help you out. The valve cover gasket on this one was a little bit more difficult than most vehicles because here is the front bank of cylinders. But you can see the rear bank is not only under the intake, but it's up against the firewall back there. Danielson did this job. He actually had to remove the cowling here, the windshield wiper cowling get the intake off, and he kind of undid the motor mounts and jacked it up but just enough to where he could get the valve cover off. And it wasn't too bad, but it's not as easy as some cars. Typically when I see these stuffed all in the engine bay, this is called fresh cab rodent repellent. I know they've been having trouble with mice. Luckily there's no chewed wires or anything, so this must be working. I'll put it back where it came from. So that is all we're doing on the top side of the engine. It's actually already done, leak free. We'll show the power steering pump from the bottom. But I'll go ahead and put this engine cover back on and then we'll go ahead and jump into the interior. It's actually a very nice interior. Okay, legends, here we go. In typical Toyota fashion, here's our lit up dash with the lights all illuminated just so we know that they do work. But do note that this has 92,138 miles. So this is a really low miles car for the age it is. We're gonna go ahead and turn off our key to save that battery. As we move up, it is a hard vinyl dash and it's in really good shape. There's no cracks or anything. Have some lovely wood-ish trim there and Lots of soft dove gray and kind of a pseudo plastic silverish, you know. We tried opening this and this hidey hole does not open. But the one below it does and it's kind of interesting. When that one rocks open, it hides a lot of the controls that controls that infotainment screen that is up there. Being that this is an 05, we're gonna turn the screen on just real quick. You'll see what the screen looks like and it is pretty rudimentary. It is not overly complicated. But for during that time, it was the best they had. So some really nice controls in there, very simple to use. 
and nice white buttons here and nice clear white buttons here as well and they're in really good shape they're not being scratched off so many times if you have fingernails they just get wore off over time simple gear selector down there another little hidey hole covering up the cup holder with a lovely wsu coaster inside as we move to our seats they are leather and they're actually in really good shape no rips no tears really no bolster on these uh, but they're rather soft they may not be as soft as a riding leather sofas that we've seen in the 70s and 80s but they're pretty comfortable no bolster because this is a toyota and we're not drifting around corners in an avalon just isn't really a thing move to the door panel there looking great got more wood accents on there as well on the top and where we would lock and unlock our door and put our windows down as well as we move to our back seat it does hold three people back there when you want to be the one on the hump looks a little bit narrow in there but it is an option the armrest is down which does allow for two cup holders as well it does have a pass-through door right there and interestingly enough it has a keyhole in it i've not seen that before because well it's such a small spot i'm not sure why you would need to lock between you and the trunk whoever demands that better not have a hatchback as we move to the ceiling everything's looking good no marks no cheeto fingers we move back there is a lovely view of our ceiling up there and it's in well, okay the ceiling is in great condition not overly pretty but the glass obviously there's no problems up there as we end at our steering wheel you'll see that we actually have several controls here more than what toyota used to do back in the day they have modernized some so we've got controls for our temperature we've got controls for the sound and whatnot and if we look over here they have added the xm stereo system which probably is a much better improvement to what the car came with originally so that's all there is to this interior let's get this into in the air and see all the leaks that the wizard's been talking about So we have the belly pan off. We can actually see the condenser and everything. It's got a few bugs in it, but nothing very serious. The radiator is nice and dry. See a motor mount there. There's a catalytic converter right up by the engine. You can see some of the oil. We haven't cleaned it all off yet. That's around the exhaust manifold and everything around there. That was coming from the valve cover gaskets. You can see where Danielson has cleaned a little bit here, but it was completely soaked in oil all the way around here from just the valve cover gaskets. Brakes look good. The CV boot looks good. Everything's nice and tight. The strut is dry. Sway bar link is good. Up in here is the power steering pump. You can see there's it's kind of wet right now because he just installed and put the lines on and got fluid all over, but we'll clean that up and should be good to go on that. Go to this wheel, brakes look good, strut is good, sway bar link is good. Everything's nice and tight. So you can see the exhaust from here back has been removed. That's strictly because of a charcoal canister. So you can see the exhaust is on the ground and out of the way as we move on back. You can see that this subframe is hanging down. And that's because some engineer decided to design the entire car around the charcoal canister. I'm not very happy that they did this. This is ridiculous. It could have been installed up in a wheel well, or usually they're up, up above the, by the fuel tank or something like that. But here it is. You can't come out this way because this trunk is in the way. You can't come out through the front because the fuel tank is in the way. And when this thing is all the way up, sandwiched up, even if you could unbolt the charcoal canister, there's nowhere you could go with it. It would just be stuck in this hole. And really it says in the book to pull a whole, all this stuff down and physically remove it from the car. I told Danielson, why don't we just pull the four bolts on this cross member, subframe, whatever you want to call this, and it should just hang there. And it does. It gives us plenty of room to unbolt this, unhook the lines, and sneak it out this way. It saves a lot of time that way. What's really astonishing is this kind of like a C5 or C6 Corvette doing a clutch or something. It's like, it should be fairly easy to get to. No, let's pull the whole, let's pull suspension components out and all this stuff just to get to a, a black box. And really the black box doesn't do anything but capture vapors for emissions purposes. But 
oh well. It had some issues, a check engine light, the little valve and things on here have failed and it comes as a complete unit. You don't really buy just the little valves and things that are on top of the canister. And so we'll finish out here, we'll get this thing on the ground and I'll show you what the new canister looks like. Obviously the mufflers are on the ground. And that pretty much finishes this car out. Let's check the date codes on the tires. Here's our date code, 40th week of 2017. These are Bridgestone Serenities. Taranza Serenity, I guess is what you call them. They got some life left in them. They got a little ways to go. You could still use these tires, but probably within the next year or two, it may be time to look for some new tires. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground and head on over to the cart. So here we have the new canister, and this is one of those rare instances where through my suppliers, they were wanting $300, $350 or something, and I just happened to scan eBay, and there's someone actually selling the OEM Toyota canister. This is actually a factory canister, new in the box, for way less, like two something, I don't remember, two, three hundred, it was right at three hundred, but if I was going to get it through my supplier, it was going to be it way into the 300. So it saved me a little bit of money, which ends up saves the customer some money. I do scan when I look at parts and things when I order for a car. I don't just jump at whatever one I find. I try to find the best price that I can find. But you can see it has all kinds of things going on here. There's a little vacuum diaphragm. There's a little valve that's electrically controlled. There's all kinds of lines and ports that go to it. And all that's inside of this box is charcoal, like little granules of charcoal. So we all know some of us that are in our 40s and 50s. You're at Kmart back in the 1980s. You're a kid. All the cars, it's real hot outside on the hot pavement. You smell gas tanks, gas vapors out of the old 70s cars. They had no charcoal canisters. It just stinks like gas everywhere. At some point the government said, that's illegal. You can't do that anymore. We need to store those vapors somewhere, not just out in the open. And that's what this does. As the hot weather comes, it, the gas in your tank actually puts off vapors. They go inside of here and store it in this little box. Until you start the engine and start driving, then it starts opening valves and things and actually pulls the vapors out and burns them and does something with them other than just letting them off into the open atmosphere. And I do agree at some points this is useful because Tyler actually had an old Lincoln years ago, a Lincoln town car or a Continental, I don't remember what it was. But it didn't have the charcoal canister and it would stink up his garage so bad. He'd be eating dinner with his family and he'd smell gasoline. He's like, what is that? And finally he traced it down to that old Lincoln. It was just an old gas tank that just vented to the air. And it filled his entire garage with fuel vapors. He finally had to start parking it outside and it solved the problem. So it is useful to have. It is a very good thing to have. It just really sucks on this car, the way that they installed it and made it so tough to get to. So definitely wanted to show you guys before this thing left the trouble we went to on the charcoal canister. We thought it'd be a quick little job and it turned out to be quite an ordeal. These are really good cars. They ride really good. They ride like a Cadillac. They ride very nice. The interior is very nice. I wouldn't mind having one other than I like my FJ Cruiser so much, but they're really a good car. And it's got the 3.5, which is also a bulletproof engine. Well, it's a Toyota. It's pretty much a bulletproof car. We well, took care of these leaks and took care of the check engine light, which is the issue with the charcoal canister. And to kind of brings to mind one last thing before we close out the video here. Just like I've mentioned on Toyotas, whenever you get a misfire or an emissions fault, which has nothing to do with anything else on your car, it will turn on traction control error lights, ABS failure lights, VSC lights. You're like, oh my god, my brakes are going to go out. No, there's actually nothing wrong with your brakes or traction control. It's just this, it's the computer's way of getting your attention. Hey, there's something wrong. All it is is a charcoal canister, but I'm going to throw up all these lights and make sure you take your butt to the shop and get it fixed. So it's kind of a crummy way of doing it, but that is the way they do it. If you're curious what kind of tools Danielson has used to work on this or any other vehicle in the shop, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. 
and make sure to hit the subscribe button because we got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching. Thank you.